It's one o'clock on Monday afternoon and you are watching Think Tech Hawaii Research in Manoa. And it's a little bit different today because rather than being the guest, uh, I am doing the guest hosting. Uh, my name is Pete McGuinness-Mark. I'm a research faculty member at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And at least for today, I'm going to be hosting uh, one of our new guest speakers. Uh, and this is Estelle Bonney, who is a graduate student at the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology. And she's in the Geology and Geophysics Department as well. And we've got an exciting interview here today uh, because we're going to be seeing some hot stuff. Estelle has been lucky enough to be traveling to the Big Island of Hawaii. And her particular interest is studying lava lakes at Kilauea Volcano. So Estelle, Welcome. It's a great pleasure to w welcome you as my first guest. Thank you. And we're excited to hear a little bit about the research you have been doing. I understand that you have recently returned to Manoa after spending about two weeks at the Volcano Observatory on the Big Island. Is that yeah. correct? That's correct, although it was one week, not two, unfortunately. Oh. Um, but I was there at uh, the beginning of March. Um, work, working with Matt Patrick, okay. uh, who is uh, one of the scientists there at HBO, um, who is doing a lot of research on Kilauea uh, mostly and uh, thermal remote sensing. So I worked with him on thermal remote sensing. Thermal remote sensing. What a great opportunity for a graduate student, though, to actually go and work with some professional volcanologists, uh, as well as to obviously be on the rim of Kilauea volcano for quite a long time. And I hope. During this interview, you'll tell us a little bit about your experiences there. But um, I understand that you're really working on the lava lake at Halimamau Volcano, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So one of the projects I'm working on for my PhD uh, is looking at Halimamau. So the lava lake that is um, at Kilauea Summit um, does emit a lot of heat, and people can see it as the glow at night, the spread glow. Um, but you can also see it from space, so um, using satellite images to look at that. Okay, that sounds great. Um, we've got a picture of uh, Halimamau Lava Lake. Maybe we can just see the first image uh, up on the screen. And can you tell us what you're looking at here, Estelle? Uh, sure. So this picture is actually taken from um, from Halimama uh, Crater. So um, it's you can see on the top right side of the image, it's actually HVO. Uh, that's where tourists can go and uh, look at the lava lake. And HVO is the Hawaii Volcano Observatory? Yes, correct. Okay. Sorry. Um, and so this picture is taken from an angle that tourists cannot see. Um, and you can see the, the surface of the lava lake. Uh, you can see this, this black um, uh, crust that's cold and the incandescent cracks in between that's uh, really hot and that's what we detect from space. Okay. Um, on this right side of the lava lake, if you go to the right, this uh, really bright spot, uh, sorry, on the left, <laughs> to the bright spot, uh, that's pattering. So okay. there is bubble bursting. And, and in the background there, that low, uh, shallow slope, that's yes. Mauna Loa Volcano. Is yes. that correct? Yes, that okay. is correct. So that's um, the tallest active volcano on Earth. Uh -uh. Uh, it's rising at 4,000 meter height. Um, um, that was the one which erupted back in March of 1984. Correct? Yes, that's okay. correct. Now, you, you actually spent a week out there. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a picture. The second picture will show you actually on the rim. Uh, and what kind of motivation did you have to go there? Why, what can you learn by physically being on the rim of an active volcano? Can you tell us a bit about that? Um, sure. So actually, that was the first time I've ever been on the lava lake uh, well, that close to the lava lake. Right. So that was really exciting to me. Um, and being there, you can feel the heat, you can smell the gas, um, and you can see and hear the activity of the lake. And um, it's pretty, like, uh, it, I cannot even find a good word yeah. for it. Uh, but being there, uh, you can actually, it's 
more easily to understand what's going on right. and what are you studying. Right. And, and this is the first time you've seen an active volcano or have you been to other volcanoes around uh, the planet? Uh, no, I was lucky enough to go to other places. I went to uh, Mount Etna in Sicily okay. um, for two weeks again and um, I've seen one of the paroxysm there. Uh, so there was uh, uh, and paroxysm, paroxysm for our viewers, what does that mean? Yeah, so uh, they call paroxysm those um, Strombolian eruption, those short-term uh, eruption that produce um, those lava fountains as well as the lava flow. Okay, and, and so the pyroclastic eruption is an explosive eruption, is that correct? So that in Hawaii it might be curtain the fire, people might have heard of that. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Okay, so you're a physical volcanologist, uh, meaning that you go out to these exotic parts of the planet and look at hot rock. What, what is it you're trying to learn? Um, so there's a lot of things to learn. Um, it's gonna, but what I'm interested in is actually basically understand how this planet, our planet Earth, is working. So mm -hmm. by, by looking at from space or from the ground, uh, you can measure temperature, you okay. can measure speed, uh, you can measure effusion rates, the so volume, uh, and although this is really important for um, people monitoring the eruption, the, the volcanoes, to uh, help hazards, uh, understanding hazard better, and um, protect people living down slope of the volcanoes. And, and of course, you and I both live here on Oahu. Um, the amount of lava coming out also releases a large amount of gas, is that correct? So we may be familiar with the term VOG, yes. or volcanic haze, right? And those of us who have allergies, for example. So when you're studying Halemama or volcano, can you tell us when we might have an allergic reaction a few days later, or is that too, too um, far down in the future? I guess, no, that could be possible, but okay. it's mostly taking into account the winds. Yeah. So uh, the prevailing, uh, the trade winds in Hawaii are um, going south, um, and so it's going away from us uh, mm -hmm. instead of going towards us. Uh -huh. So the Halimama is constantly emitting gas, but it's not always reaching us okay. because we're northwest of right, uh, the right. big but, island. But it has relevance for people living on other islands as well as yes. the big island because of the gas presumably goes down, the trade winds might fail and we see the get volcanic gas on Oahu or on Kauai, that sort of thing. Yeah. Let's take a look at another picture if we may. And you can tell us, th this looks like uh, an air photograph, is that one that you took or is that? Yes, so I'm not sure that's I took that one, but uh, I was on the helicopter on ah, that day. Must be exciting. Uh, it was definitely a memorable yeah. experience for me. Yeah. Uh, so you get on this helicopter with the door open, and uh, you can just take videos and pictures the whole time. And uh, I was with Matt Patrick okay. and Tim Orr. Ho ho day. Hopefully you were strapped in. I've flown on yes. helicopters with no doors, and it's. Quite an exciting thing when they bank around to the sides and uh, yeah, you're no like uh, yes. taking a picture, but yes, you know, yes, yes. don't want to go too far. Okay, and I think we have one other picture as well, which we can take a look at. Oh, and this is one at night. And uh, are, are those uh, things off to the left of the bright orange area? Are they your cameras, or, or what? What kind? Those of are not my cameras, but okay. those are HBO cameras. They're the Volcano Observatory's cameras, yes. okay. So those are uh, thermal cameras. I'm not sure those are there all the time. I think those were um, uh, not okay. permanent. Okay, so those are the cameras that the survey has. If you go to their website, for example, you can see... I don't think, not shots. that one. Okay, not so that's, that a, one. that's a different, different one. Yeah, okay. actually, so they have one that's they call the Overlook which mm -hmm. is where tourists were uh, able to go before the eruption sun started. Okay. Uh, and actually on the first picture, you could see it on the left-hand corner of the Well, well, well of course, 
Yeah, this that is one. this is a dynamic volcano, right? So looking at still photographs doesn't really give our viewers a good understanding of what it's like. So I think you you brought along a video which we could perhaps take a look at now uh, to actually show what some of the dynamics are of the the lava lake. Can we run the first video? Yes. Okay, and of course there's some little bit of an introduction here. Uh, these are produced by the U.S. Geological Survey's Hawaii Volcano Observatory, and there's the, the URL yep. for the website. Everybody can go and see All right, see now it. this is fabulous. <laughs> Tell us, what, we, what are we seeing here? <laughs> All right, we're seeing the surface of a lot of the lake moving. So right. you and can see it's uh, mostly going uh, from the middle away towards this pattering area. Okay. Um, and... So this is the most of the time the way it's going from actually north to south or left to the image from uh, the right. Uh -huh. um, that's the normal um, sputtering activity that's going on the Hale Mau Okay, I, I, and you said that it was spreading from the center outwards. What, what does that tell you? Um, so there's basically movement. Is, so is, it, is it a convection cell or something like that? Yes. Uh, and this lava lake, how big is it? Uh, so it changed its size <laughs> over time. Okay. I, uh, when the eruption started, I believe it was about 35 meter wide. Uh -huh. uh, now it's up to 250 meter wide. Uh, and, and how far below the, the rim is it? Uh, so it's also again changing, and they have measurements of the lake level um, over time. Okay. And uh, okay, let's run that video again while you're talking, so we can see it's really, really spectacular. And I love the way that. Yeah, it's just like plate tectonics on yes. the Earth, right? Yes, actually, people use plate tectonic words and have like ridges and subduction zones okay. to explain the level. And, and of course, we can see all the gas coming off from the sides. That's the volcanic VOG, yes. which is coming out uh, towards Oahu and that sort of thing. And, and when you say that you can see these kind of lava lakes from of the lakes? What, what kind of detail can you see in your space observations? So I used a certain satellite called MODIS, uh, which is a moderate resolution imaging spe spectral radiometer that has a it's one... A mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> it's a one, the pixel size of the image is one uh, kilometer okay. squared. Um, so it's not like low enough to see the okay. movement at the surface, but it's enough to detect the heat from the lava lake. Okay, that sounds fascinating <laughs> to be able to see this sort of thing with a satellite yes. and presumably you come back on a regular basis with the satellite to mm -hmm. see how it's changed and you can get some understanding. Uh, does this let you predict when the volcano is going to be really active or not? Um, so we're still working on that. Um, okay. So okay. We, one of the measurements we do is the radiant heat flux Okay. Uh, so how much heat is uh, emitted by the lava lake and we get, so because we do this measurement in the mid wave infrared over 4 micron, anyway we have to uh, take into account the fact that uh, this during the day solar um, um, ray can affect so our there's, measurement. there's a lot of mathematics or engineering or uh, a lot of detailed research that you have to do. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. So, but I'm only using nighttime data to get to just not take into account okay. this solar effect on my measurements. Uh, but then you can see how it changed over time and try to relate that to the lake level. Okay. Um, does that, that sounds correlate good. or not? Yeah. Well, I think we're going to be having to take a break soon, but when we come back, it'd be really interesting to know how you as a junior graduate student working on your PhD can actually translate the kinds of observations you're making uh, here at Hale Mau Mau uh, and sort of how that affects your career. So uh, um, I suspect we're going to be taking a break soon. So you are watching Think Tech Hawaii and this is Research in Manoa. I'm Pete McGuinness-Mark and uh, I've got Estelle Iboni here uh, who's a graduate student working on Kilauea Volcano. Hi, I'm Nicole Alexander Enos, and I was born three weeks ago. Congratulations on being there for me for some of the few weeks of my life. 
I'm starting a new show, The Millennial Mind, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. for the month of April, where we'll go over some of the reasons why millennials are some of the most anxious and frustrated people at the moment. Ah! I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., you'll have a chance to come and listen and learn from scientists around the world. Scientists who talk about their work in meaningful, easy to understand ways. And you'll come to appreciate science as a wonderful way of thinking, way of knowing about the world. You'll learn interesting facts, interesting ideas. You'll be stimulated to think more. Please come join us every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii for Likeable Science with me, your host, Ethan Allen. And we're back, and you are watching Think Tech Hawaii Research in Manoa. I'm the guest host, Pete McGuinness Mark. I'm a research faculty member at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And with me today is Estelle Boney, who is a graduate student at the university, and she's been telling us all about the active lava lake at Halemaumau in Kilauea Volcano. Now, Estelle, we mentioned before the break that you're a graduate student, you've been having this great time at Kilauea Volcano, and I'm interested, as a graduate student, what's the point? People will see this show and they'll recognize it's a lot of fun, yes. especially flying in helicopters, <laughs> especially doing nighttime observations. But what, what career-wise do you think um, is of benefit to you? Um, well, I guess the main point of going there and working in this type of environment for me is um, this is what I would want to do. This uh -huh. is um, a, definitely an, an environment that is really nice and challenging, but in a good way. So you want to do good research um, and monitor the volcano to help the research to keep on moving and understand better how the volcano works and help people. So, so, so you want to be a volcanologist, yes. is that correct? So <laughs> you, you spent like a week at Hawaii Volcano Observatory, what's it like for, for our viewers? Tell us, you know, do they, all the people there, are they geologists, are they computer scientists? Um, or what, what kind of personnel are there? There's a, a lot of people working there. Um, I, so I have to say that I also spent six months um, before I started my PhD working also at the Volcano Observatory. Okay. So I know them really well and um, there's geologists, seismologists, uh, gas geochemists, um, a lot of computer scientists, um, and even the tech people that help setting up all those equipment, that's very important. Um, and they all work together hand in hand, and really, like, you can just go to their door and, and ask them a question about their specific um, subject and help you out with your own research. Okay. So this is a great opportunity as a graduate student to be able to go and work with professionals. Yes. Is, is this the kind of place where you would like to work or um, obviously uh, people might be able to tell from your accent like mine you did not grow up here on Oahu? No I did uh, not. Yes. yes. <laughs> so um, I'm from France and um, Unfortunately, as a French citizen, I'm not uh, really able to work at one of those volcano observatories in the U.S., but we have others um, okay. in other places in the world, um, especially one in uh, La Réunion uh, Island. It's in a French island in the middle of the Indian Ocean, and they have an active volcano there right. with a volcano observatory. In a that, that's the just west of Madagascar by yes. a thousand kilometers or something like that. Yes. yes. So east of East, east of east. Madagascar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good. So you might actually become a professional volcanologist doing both field work and satellite studies and that sort of thing. That would be the best thing that could happen great, to me. Great, great. <laughs> well, let's take a look at some of the other images yeah. that you brought us. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. Oh, we've got another video. I'm sorry. So. Here we see a, a, a full description of the lava lake at the summit of Kilauea volcano spattering at the lake margin. Yeah. So here we go. And I guess what we're seeing here is, is the downward going part of yes, the... Yes, exactly. Is that right? Yes. So um, the 
well, you can't see it as well as before because it's not speed up this time. Uh, yeah. But as the gas is released in those bubble bursting, um, it's creating a downward movement. So the crust is and the lava at this time is actually going down. Okay, maybe we can show that one again and take an, another look. And um, Estelle, can you tell us what kind of scale are we looking at? Is, is it the same size as this table or this building? You know, it's really hard to get an appreciation for how big some yeah. of these. Yeah, so I believe they use the, the crater wall mm -hmm. um, as scale and the, the highest, um, what do you see this red blob spatter uh, of uh, molten lava is ejected. It can go as high as 25 meter in 25 this case. 25 meters, okay. So or 80 feet. Yes, yeah, fairly high. Yeah. And so when we're seeing those fountains, those bursting bubbles, um, on Oahu we're accustomed to lava flows like we see at Makapu or going mm -hmm. up the Pali Highway, and they're just solid lavas. What's causing the bubbles to be there? Um, so that's the, just the gas is coming from down below. Okay. Um, so it's as it's rising up, it actually exsolves from uh, the magma. Exsolves meaning it escapes from the, the magma. Yes, yes. Okay. and it creates this bubble and yes. those bubble rising and then the crust is, gets that it's not strong enough to keep it down and it just bursts and the pressure is too strong. Okay, okay. And, and what kind of gases are there? Um, so you have a mix of different gases, um, CO2, H, Which is uh, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide okay. uh, sulfur dioxide, okay. um, some water, some uh, um, chlor chloride, ah. <laughs> uh, fluoride, um, but those are a lesser amount. Okay, um, okay. And, and where does this gas originate from? Is it sort of... Uh, actually in the lava lake itself? Does it suck it out of the atmosphere or...? or no, it's in the lava lake itself. It's so in the lava lake itself? It's related to um, magma chamber right. further down. And the magma chamber itself is presumably kilometers or even a hundred kilometers down, that sort of thing. Yes, yeah, so yeah. those are uh, worked out by geophysicists um, and okay. they use also different like deformation uh, to estimate the volume of okay. the magma chamber and how deep it is. Okay. So when you say a geophysicist, that would be someone who might be studying the small earthquakes associated with the volcano and you can tell where, at what depth. Yes, as well as, so. as tilt. So how much the, the volcano moves. So as magma comes up, pressure um, increase mm -hmm. and it makes the volcano flank actually rise. So it's like an inflating balloon yes. almost. That's something like that. fascinating. And, <laughs> and you can measure that inflation of the balloon quite easily uh, or very precisely. Yeah, they use yeah. GPS. Okay. Now GPS is used uh, a lot, um, uh -huh. leveling technique okay. as well. Um, and uh, they get really good precision. Um, I'm not 100% sure how much, but it's in centimeter movement. So. All right, but, but also, um, isn't there another part of the Kilauea volcano that is active now? Um, there's the Pu'uo vent, which is further down the east. Yes. So are the two connected? Or yes. Oh, they are. Yes. How, how are they connected? Um, so we believe that there is, though there is a magma chamber, but um, as the magma comes up and it goes to the summit, but also there is another conduit that goes down uh, towards the East Risk Zone. Okay, okay, great. Let's see another video. These are really neat. Thank you so much for bringing them along. And again, point out these are all uh, produced by the US Geological Survey. Um, this one is taken from um, the actual HVO building, not from the Overlook. Okay. So that's what people could see. And this, so this is a distant view, but oh, what, what, what's happening there? What's happening there? Uh, so a rock fall, some, of the some part of the crater wall fell into the lava lake and it disturbed the lake surface and created this big explosion. Okay, so is this the way that the lava lake expands? So, yes. Uh, and presumably um, that is why tourists can't actually go 
to the same place as you went. Exactly. Simply because that might happen. Let's see that one again, because that, that was quite catastrophic and fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can do it. All right, and this is sped up, of course, and so that brown cloud. Yes. Is that the volcano exploding, or, or what? What's uh, what are we seeing? So I think there is a mix of um, the, bit, because the rock falling down. So okay. there is a mix of old um, material that's okay. from the crater wall, but as well as some of actual I, lava I, from the lake. I love the way that the surface of the lava lake was just dancing around, yeah. and you had all of. Uh, presumably, that's because you had these rocks falling from the cliff behind it yes. and, and, and either releasing gas yeah. or, or the big boulders are just sinking totally. through the lava. Yeah, because it's, so the crust is usually colder, uh -huh. um, but as the rock fall, it's making the, uh, the hotter lava that's underneath come back to the surface and, and okay. that's recalibrating over time. Then. Uh, and, and does this happen often or are we just really lucky to have seen this one event? No, it's pretty often. It's pretty often, yeah. like once a day or no. once a year or? Uh, I would say maybe like okay. once every couple okay. months. We've got one more video, so let's just see if uh, you can tell us. And this is another video of the spattering of the lava lake. Yeah. So, um, th th these are really spectacular. And this, this is just another great view. Um, obviously, you wouldn't be able to get as close to the lava lake to, to see this. But I remember I worked out on the Kupainar lava lake uh -huh. back in the late 1980s. And this is a very common process, isn't it? So, yeah, uh, so actually, some part of this you cannot see because it's from another view and the crater wall is heating it. But I've seen something like that too uh, in like lava ponds. Uh -huh. So instead of being a continuous lava lake, you can form those kind of lava ponds that pool of lava and the same thing happens. Okay. Great. Well, so, yeah, as we draw to a close on the show, what's next for you? What, apart from getting your PhD, <laughs> yeah. of course, which is uh, the obvious thing that a graduate student uh -huh. uh, has to plan for. Where does your research take you? Um, what, what, what do you need to know? What do I need to know? Well, I need to know a lot more. There's uh -huh. still a lot more to know. Um, but, I mean, it's a tricky question <laughs> in, for me. I, um, I will try to have a postdoc and eventually um, hopefully get to my objective to be um, working in an observatory okay. someday. Okay, well, I think we're drawing to the end of the program. Uh, let me just remind you, you are watching Think Tech Hawaii right here every Monday at 1 p.m. Hawaii time. So we've been watching uh, some spectacular videos that our guest today, Estelle Bonney, has brought along. Estelle, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been a great pleasure. You, you are you. my first <laughs> guest. Uh, I'm hoping that there will be many more from the university. There's some fascinating research which is being done there. So thank you once again for coming along. And thank you, the audience. I hope you found this very interesting and that you'll join us again next Monday for Think Tech Hawaii. See you then. Thank you.